this data is going to be important for a lot of you and people you know because a lot of Americans are on proton pump inhibitors, also strong antacids that your doctor has prescribed for you. And the link between uh, PPIs, as they're called, and heart attack and stroke is definitely something that we need to really sit up and take notice about. I talk about PPIs and their danger, and so you can see other videos when I've gone over other aspects of them. But uh, yesterday, I talked about nitric oxide, and it is actually a gas that our bodies produce. And I talked about the fact that you start with something called nitrate, you turn it into nitrite, and that requires bacteria in good bacteria in your mouth. So yesterday we talked about the dangers of mouthwashes. Um, so you can go look at that from yesterday. But basically the pattern is you've got nitrate that you eat. Dark green leafies are a great source in your mouth. You then turn it into what's called nitrite, and you swallow your saliva. <laughs> I swallowed as I said that. You swallow your saliva, and um, you need enough acid in your stomach. So you need an acidic environment to then do the translation into nitric oxide. And nitric oxide is critical. It's a gas and what's amazing about it, and there's so much research, but um, is that it lasts less than a second. So you go, <laughs> how can we utilize something that's, that's only around for less than a second? But it affects um, the lining of your blood vessels. And so it can influence uh, diabetes, erectile dysfunction, dementia, what am I missing, um, and high blood pressure, hence the, the heart link there. But um, again, while yesterday we talked about the good bacteria in the mouth, today we're talking about the fact that if you have suppressed acid in your stomach, you're not making that conversion into nitric oxide. And what research has shown, and this research was done by a man called John Cook, and he said once people have been on the PPIs for even three years, and that might sound like a long time, but I regularly, with my work in hiatal hernia syndrome, I regularly meet people who have been on PPIs for decades. So three to five years is, is not an outrageous length of time, unfortunately, with something that you really shouldn't be on for more than a couple of weeks. But doctors put their patients on these and they leave them on them. And um, so what this uh, researcher, John Cook, found was that lack of stomach acid, um, oh, triple, Triple OG says, I should get off my PPI. I've been on them for two months. Yeah, there's a lot of negatives, and, and we're more than happy to help you with that because it's, it's actually very easy for us to get people successfully off PPIs by getting to the root cause. I'll come back to that. But getting back to um, this research is that the way we might make this very important health saving gas, nitric oxide, is through two different pathways. One has to do with these, the endothelial cells, so that's lining our vessels, and then the other is through um, having good stomach acid. So um, when your stomach acid is reduced, it's affecting actually both pathways that make nitric oxide. So John Cook stated that when you've been on these for three to five years, it increases your risk of heart attack and stroke by 30 to 40 percent. And that's high because we're already at a very high risk for heart disease and stroke. And so anything that adds to that risk is, again, something we really just have to take notice of. So when it comes, just to give you a little brief overview, overview when it comes to um, getting to the root cause of why you're on a PPI is basically your your stomach is spasming for a reason and the contents of your stomach acid is moving up your esophagus and that's heartburn, that's GERD. Sometimes people have what's called silent reflux so they, they feel something stuck in their throat or their voice feels irritated but they don't have obvious signs of like acid in their throat um, or heartburn so it has a few insidious ways that, that the acid can come up the esophagus but when it does, then you are given a PPI, and, and sometimes it very much alleviates the symptoms, but the, what it's doing to your health is, is frightening. So um, I hope this was helpful. Please share this video if you like it. Subscribe to the channel um, because these are, these are the kind of things that we talk about. And I don't want to just leave you with, because I speak to so many different patients who have 
reflux associated with hiatal hernia syndrome. And I, I don't want you to think I'm leaving you with, oh, stop your PPI and suffer miserably. Um, uh, oh, you do have a, so triple OG is saying I have a two centimeter hiatal hernia. Yeah, so please consider contacting us. Um, we would love to help with that because the, it can be very miserable. If somebody's just living with 24 seven um, GERD, acid reflux, it is absolutely miserable. You can't sleep, you have this burning. And, and honestly, if it's, if it's true reflux from the viewpoint that there's a lot of acid coating that esophagus, you can, start, you can start to get a lot of irritation to the esophagus. Over time, it can lead to ulcers. Over a lot of time, it can lead to esophageal cancer. So I am not in any way saying, oh, just stop your PPI and, and suffer, not at all. What I'm saying is that it's very easy to get to the root cause of why that stomach is spasming so that it will no longer take its contents and push them up your esophagus. And acid is so important. It is the stomach's job to be in bag of acid. So when we go in and just suppress that acid, it's, it's uh, really not being respectful of the first place that our food goes the stomach to have this nice acidic environment that churns the food and breaks it up and then sets it up for good absorption and digestion into the small intestine. So um, anyway, if you do need help, please reach out. That's why we're here and my team is here and we have very good success getting people off PPIs, off these antacid medications, uh, but just another very important reason why you should do it. So. Um, Anyway, I won't see you tomorrow because tomorrow's Saturday, but I'll see you Monday. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.